All right, what is up, everybody? Welcome into today's edition of In the Game. I am your host, Hustle. And as always, we're going to be diving into the markets, but more so my ideology to build my ideal portfolio heading into 2024 and beyond for the bull run. Becker put out a great tweet today. He said, the best thing you can do in crypto is nothing. Set your positions, get all your entries, and let them play out. And that's exactly what we've done throughout the whole bear. But heading into 2024, it might be the time to adjust around your portfolio portfolio to the niches and the sectors that you're looking to most hammer down on in the next bull. So I'm going to go over my portfolio allocations in this video. So without further ado, let's jump in the game. And as always, guys, drop down, hit that like button, and subscribe to the channel. We're so close to 90,000 subs. Hit that subscribe button. Tell your crypto gaming DGen friends that we got the best alpha on YouTube over here on In The Game. And a quick shout out to our sponsors here on In The Game. We have Seedify, Vulcan Forged, Ultra, Redato, Dreams Quest, Game Starter, and NordVPN, all top tier sponsors here on In The Game. You can drop down in the description down below and find more information on all of our sponsors in the description below. All right, let's jump into it. Today, we're not really going to be talking about the markets too much. Um, a couple things I will highlight quickly. Uh, we have Crown, which we isolated earlier this week as one of those quality buys uh and you know it's playing out really well it's up 20 percent. i believe they announced that alex becker came on as an advisor so it got that nice little pump because of that we all know how it goes uh it seems like prime has taken a little bit of a leg up but like i said we're not really here to discuss the markets or certain tokens we are buying today we are more so here to talk about our ideology heading into 2024 and the bull run for 2025 how am i dividing up my portfolio and how am I going to attack this next year and this next cycle to make maximum gains? So you guys all know, I'm a gaming maxi. Like I'm not the type of person that's going to hop from L1s, L2, airdrops, uh, security tokens, DEXs, liquid staking, AI, real world assets. That's just not me. I'm going to isolate on gaming because I understand gaming. And I know when I've hopped around to different niches and narratives in my time in crypto, I get absolutely slaughtered. And that's because time in the market beats timing the market. So when you're just jumping into narratives, jumping into narratives, it's going to be really hard to capture the max upside because you're not sticking around. You're not in the weeds on those niches. And then whenever they happen, you rotate your capital, but it's usually too late at that point in time if you're just chasing narratives. So for me, I stick to gaming and I kind of categorize my portfolio into a few different sections. And the first one is obvious. Um, the first one is obvious. I do have a diagram here, uh, a very basic pie graph to, to walk you guys through. And I'm going to go ahead and give a TLDR. Like, um, I can't give you every single token in my portfolio. And the reason being, uh, we could do a whole six episode series on my portfolio. I have too many to like. My strategy is definitely not the strategy for everyone. I, I isolate into bigger caps with larger size. I isolate a lot of lower market cap stuff with a little lower size, but with the upside potential way higher on those tokens, my risk tolerance is just a little different. And I'll able to kind of allocate into a little more riskier and heavy, like, you know, market cap tokens and kind of balance myself out. But that's my strategy. So I'm not going to give you every single token that's in my portfolio because like i said we could make a netflix original or a youtube in the game original uh, with six episodes about what's in my portfolio okay but what i am going to do i'm going to lay out the sectors that are in my portfolio and the way that i isolate them the buckets and then a couple of example tokens that fit into each one of them so number one this big orange slice uh 30 bitcoin and eth that's my allocation um personally I have my Bitcoin holdings. They're stacked away. Obviously, I think that that's like the anchor of your portfolio. Uh, and it all depends on your size. We've talked about this in the past with Bitcoin being in your portfolio. If you're only playing with $20,000, $10,000, Bitcoin isn't going to do much for you. Like having half of a Bitcoin or whatever the case is, if you have a 20K portfolio, it's not really like going to 
that's not going to do the best for you in the next cycle. So I would isolate more into the altcoins at that point in time if you're playing with that type of size. But um, if you have the portfolio to do it, I have about 30% of my entire portfolio uh, between Bitcoin and Ethereum. Reason being, obviously, Bitcoin is gold. Ethereum is oil. And we're seeing recently the Ethereum's catching up. Ethereum's not dead. The liquidity's on Ethereum. The DEX volume is on Ethereum. The NFT market's on Ethereum. Like people freak out too much about that. So I do have 30% of my port in Bitcoin and Ethereum. But this is a crypto gaming show. And I'm not here to talk about Bitcoin and Ethereum. So we're going to move on. That one's pretty simple. 25% of my portfolio was within the gaming chains. Now, when I say gaming chains, I'm talking about Immutable. I'm talking about Beam, Ronin, Solana, Avalanche, the Root Network. We talked about the Root Network last show. They're doing the Ready Player One Metaverse. They have Futureverse. They have everything that they're doing. Like These are the projects that I'm exampling for the chains. So why is this a part of my portfolio, you might ask? Well, with the activity on these chains eventually, with all these games coming to IMX, like Wag Me Games, they're crushing it on the IMX activity right now. We're going to have Alluvium, Ember Sword, all these different games coming to the chain. Beam Subnet is looking fantastic. We have Ronin with all the activity of Sky Mavis's games, with Pixels, with Axie Infinity, and more games to come. We have Solana with Photo Finish and... Uh, Honeyland, a lot of different games building on Soul. We have Avalanche with the upcoming Shrapnel. With We have Off the Grid. We have a lot of different subnets underneath Avalanche. So these are the ones that I'm isolating, for example, uh, on the gaming chain side. If these have a hit game, these chains are going to go absolutely crazy. And these are low risk. I think I would deem every single one of the ones I just gave an example for in this category as low risk. Now, there's definitely other ones out there like Polygon. I, I do hold some Polygon. There are some other chains uh, that you could use as examples. But these are the examples I'm going to use for this video. IMX, Beam, Ronin, Solana, Avalanche, and the Root Network. Those are some of the chains uh, that I am isolating to take advantage of heading into the next cycle. So that's a quick and easy two parts of our portfolio. We have 30% Bitcoin and ETH, 25% in different gaming blockchains. And I'm going specific gaming blockchains. Like let, if we if we just look at the uh, crypto market, for example, like I don't hold any Arbitrum. I have, I have gas for Arbitrum. Arbitrum's great, but I think there's better gaming chain plays. And I, I just... I'm okay with missing out on Arbitrum for now. I'm I'm completely okay with that. Like I hold a grand total of like, I don't, none. I, it, I think ETH is the gas token on, on Arbitrum, right? So I don't even have to use Arbitrum for gas. That's the thing. So um, at that point, I don't really hold um, any of that. If I'm looking through some of these different coins, most of my watch list is gaming. But for example, like I just don't hold XRP. I don't have Cardano. I'm not looking at that type of stuff because they have nothing to do with the gaming space. And I see so much adoption and users coming to the gaming space that the gaming chains are really going to benefit from that narrative moving forward, especially once that activity ramps up on certain chains like Ronin, like Beam, like IMX, Solana, Avalanche, Avalanche subnets, the Root Network. Those are the ones I'm really looking at to have huge runs in the next cycle. The third category in my portfolio out of five categories is gaming studios and infrastructure. So I'm going to bucket these together because uh, the other two sections are definitely very different. So this is the stuff like Vulcan. We have high conviction in what Vulcan Forge is doing. Superverse. Elio has some updates coming around the corner that's going to shock people. I can tell you that. Miria is revamping their entire platform really excited about what they're doing. So Myria, playable games. This one's taken a significant dip since the uh, recent all-time highs. It's back to 25 million circulating market cap. I think this one's at this point getting pretty undervalued once again. So uh, keeping my eye on that. Stuff like GameSwift, stuff like Nakamoto Games, uh, stuff like Games for a Living, Altura. Altura is getting on more exchanges. They have huge marketplace announcements with quality games coming up here very soon. So I'm stoked for what they're doing. We have Cedify, obviously been a huge fan of Cedify. We caught this one at the lows around 60 cents. So these are the types of things like the gaming studios and infrastructure, right? Cedify, I consider infrastructure. They're incubating quality projects on their launch pad. Altura is tooling games with SDKs. That is definitely infrastructure. Gaming studios, stuff like Vulcan, 
Super, Miria, Playable Games, Game Swift, Nakamoto Games, Games for a Living. These are the types of projects that I'm filling up that basket of that 20% with. Um, and up in the top right right now, Game Starter. That's a quality launch pad. That's a low market cap. They have a good ecosystem, good overall ethos, good studio, et cetera. So that's another one you could stick in this category. And I'm going over more of like the higher cap stuff in most of these categories, but I am allocated into smaller market cap plays within these ecosystems as well. So, um, you know, I have my higher market cap stuff, like let's just say Vulcan Forged and Super. But then when we get into the Myrias, the Playables, the Game Swifts, the Nakamoto Games, the Games for a Living, Altura, those types of plays are a little lower market cap. So I am spacing out my plays to where the high market cap stuff can, you know, 5, 10, maybe 20x in a bull. But that lower market cap stuff could maybe 20, 50, 100x in a full-blown bull. So I'm setting myself up for mass success there, but also optimizing my downside to not really hurt if it happens, right? So you allocate more into those higher market cap plays. You allocate less capital into the lower cap stuff with knowing that that lower cap stuff can multiply so much faster. So that's that 20% bucket there, gaming studios and infrastructure. And I have to highlight it again, like this is not a live stream. This is a video. So hopefully you watched the whole thing, but another TLDR, I'm not giving you every single token in my portfolio at this moment in time. Um, there are a couple things like I would say at the end of the day, I could adjust this a bit and maybe make it 8% Gamblefy, 2% AI. There are a couple of AI projects in my portfolio, but for me in the gaming sector, we're just going to keep that in totality. This is in the game. We're talking about crypto gaming. So if I'm putting together a gaming basket here, this is exactly the point of attack uh, that I would go for. So the next sector in the portfolio is games. So um, individual games. Why is this only 15% whereas chains and infrastructure are 20? Well, games are riskier. So why do I say that? Making a hit game is hard enough. Betting on a hit game to do well from an investor perspective is even harder. Venture capital firms all the time lose money on traditional games that they think can be the next Fortnite, the next hit mobile game, the next this or that, and it never works out, right? So games are a risky endeavor, but if you're betting on quality horses, no pun intended, uh, then you can probably make it out like a bandit in this cycle. Look at last cycle. Yes, Gala 37X from two cents to 74 cents. But during that same time period, Axie Infinity like 100x, okay? The games that take off in the cycle are going to do like leveraged bets basically on the normal projects because the quality games of the next cycle are going to have such rapid growth, rapid user base, rapid sentiment around them that they're just going to go crazy. So if you spread your bets amongst a couple games, I think you'll hit one. I, I really do think so. But if you only bet on individual games, you're really just relying on like hype cycles to pump your bags. But if you have calculated bets within these niches, then that's exactly how you're going to win on the game side. So with that being said, some that I'm betting on echelon prime. I still love alluvium Honeyland over on Solana. I think this one's going to freaking crush it heading into the next cycle crown by third time games. We've been talking about photo finish game heading up to um, heading up to the Kentucky Derby. I think this one's going to absolutely skyrocket because they're the official horse racing partner of the Kentucky Derby stuff like shrapnel Senate wag me games, Katana Inu. These are the types of plays. And once again, Again, we're spreading from high market cap stuff, you know, multi hundred million, multi hundred million down to 26 mil, 54 million, 62 million, uh, 15 million, 28 million, and a $25 million market cap here uh, for Katana Inu, for example. So these are the different types of games that we're isolating inside of that games category to potentially maximize our upside. And if you notice, all of these are quality. I mean, Parallel, Illuvium, all these different games are super, super high quality. And for the most part, they all have high upside. So that's what I'm talking about is like these all are, you could deem them a risk. Like some of these games couldn't, might, might not come through. Like you never know. Ga the gaming industry is a fickle thing. People move from one game to the other. Games die and this happens. But 
That's the reason we're going heavier on infra and chains. Immutable, Beam, Ronin, Soul, A aren't going to die. Vulcan, Superverse, Myria, these big studios with numerous games, their own blockchains, the infrastructure, the Cedifies, the Alturas, they're not going to die because they are incubated and, and, and their projects are in like actually embedded in different games and different ecosystems to where if one thing fails, they're not going to fail. But with a game, if the game fails, then the whole project fails, right? So that's the one thing you have to look at. But I think our bets here are pretty solid. Stuff like Prime, Alluvium, Honeyland, Crown, Shrap, Senate, Wagme, and Katana Inu. That's a, you know, from a top to bottom, high level market cap to low cap stuff. That's where I would be looking to kind of spread my bags between those low market cap and high market cap ranges with quality projects, with quality communities that I genuinely think will make it out alive. Uh, heading into the next cycle. And that's what we need. We need these games to survive through the cycle. And I think that these specific games will see massive, massive upside during that point in time. And then as far as the gaming portfolio goes, the last sector here is GambleFi. You guys know I'm a big fan of the GambleFi niche. Um, anyone who followed my journey from the beginning would know um, back in 2015. Yes, 2015. I was I was 19 years old. Um, I was buying Bitcoin and putting it into the sports book to play because they only accepted crypto. So I've told that story a few times here on the show, on other podcasts, et cetera. But that was my entry into crypto, but I wasn't really holding crypto. And then I eventually got accustomed to it more around the 2017 time period. That's when I actually started buying crypto and then um, you know through the 2021 cycle, et cetera. But that was my entry into the into the you know industry was depositing crypto into a sports book. So I understand gaming a lot because of my esports background and my just experience multiple decades basically playing video games throughout my lifetime. And then um, we we see the GambleFi side. That was my entrance into crypto years and years ago, about eight years ago, uh, nine years ago. Now that's crazy to say, nine twenty fifteen nine years ago. Wow. Um, that's wild. But some of the GambleFi stuff that I'm really isolating, and you could put this in gaming, you could put this in infrastructure. This kind of goes both ways, but I'm going to term it in the GambleFi side because this right here is esports. This is esports wagering. So it has both. It has the betting side of a GambleFi project with the wagering player versus player, team versus team. Like this is where this project is going to shine. They're going to be incubating so many wager matches with Web3 games. And this one's fully diluted, which I love. It's a $42 million market cap circulating and fully diluted. So this one's kind of the hybrid GameFi and GambleFi. I'm looking at stuff like Winner. Um, Winner, they're going over to Solana. They're on Arbitrum. I think they're going to keep going to more chains. This one's going to be a huge winner, no pun intended. Um, I'm looking at Based. Based is one of my... At this point in time, probably my favorite because it's fully diluted. It's a $20 million circulating and fully diluted market cap. There's no team tokens. They have a marketing war chest, no team tokens. They just had 130000 in revenue last month, and they paid out the stakers $103,000. So this is one of my favorites, if not my top gamble fi play heading into the next cycle. And then stuff like Kaneko, which is on um, Solana. So I'm isolating different chains here, guys, like uh, based is primarily on Ethereum. Winner is on Arb and Solana. We have Dubs, which is going to be a wagering platform between a lot of different games. They operate on the Ethereum chain at this point in time. And then Kaneko, which is over on Solana. So those are four GambleFi plays, for example, that I'm really bullish on heading into the next cycle. And I think that each chain that they're on matters. And then the use case of the product really matters as well. Winner, you can build games. Based is the full-fledged casino. Dubs is the esports wagering platform. And then Kaneko is that low market cap Solana casino where when Solana runs, I see this absolutely printing as far as the upside. So that's my layout of the portfolio. Um, it's pretty simple. And like I said, I cannot sit here for uh, 30 minutes, an hour, every single, you know, six shows in a row and go through each sector, every coin that's in my portfolio and why it's there. And, and honestly, if an influencer, if, if you're just copy trading anyone out there, 
this is just going to be the realest thing you'll ever hear on YouTube. If you're just taking advice from YouTubers and that's how you're going to shape your thesis, that's not exactly how you're going to win. Like, do I think I have a phenomenal portfolio and a phenomenal game plan? Absolutely. But people can be wrong. They won't tell you that, but they can be wrong. So here's what I implore you. Was that the right word? Here's what I uh, would task you with. Maybe some homework while you're watching this video. What are the projects you would fit into this basket? You know, take a look at this pie graph, which I I, I do think the pie graph phenomenal um, layout. If you're looking to build a crypto gaming centric portfolio, right? And I'm not narrative hopping. I don't care about this, this, and this. I don't care what tomorrow's fad is. I care long term that the gaming space is going to be the one that leads the charge. But what you have to remember, no one has a crystal ball. I think I've done a great job of laying out a portfolio and the projects that I have allocated within that. Um, but I want you to do your own research. I want you to figure out the projects that resonate with you, right? Like I said, dubs make sense to me because I played in the esports sector. They do esports wagering here on dubs. Gaming studios like Vulcan, Super, all these projects make a lot of sense to me. The chains, the activity that's going to be on these things in the next cycle when gaming takes off. It just makes way too much sense to me. Uh, and, and then the individual games, I think that these are all sure bets uh, to make it into the next cycle. So that's my thesis based on the research that I've done. But take this mold that I just gave you and implement it across your own portfolio. Throw some in these baskets and see what it looks like because that's what it's all about. It's about investing in projects that you understand and not what tomorrow's fad is going to be. And that's what this portfolio is all about. Long-term gains long-term time horizon. And like I said earlier, time in the market will beat timing the market. If you plant the seeds in these gaming tokens, man, we said this last summer too. Oh, that, that really materialized well when we said plant the seeds now and watch them harvest later. We had a rapid harvest over the fall, this bull run with the gaming tokens. But I think next cycle is going to make what just happened look very, very minor. And that next gaming bull run is going to be very major. So make sure your portfolio is lined up. I hope this was valuable for you in your investing thesis and hopefully putting together, if you're all in on gaming, I think this is a way to potentially maximize your gains heading into the next cycle. And a quick shout out to some of our sponsors here. Vulcan Forge, one of my favorite gaming studio projects. Three reasons that they're gamifying the metaverse. Uh, Metascapes is the one, like I, I kind of think it's their killer app. Um, they're really improving the games on their chain right now and, and on Elysium and, and on Vulcan. And I think that this one's going to be kind of like their killer app. It looks fantastic. The world builder of Metascapes. 83% um, of Metaverse users are under 18. 52% uh, of adults find Metaverse con uh, concepts too complex. And 50% of the top 10 Metaverse investors are gaming companies. So, you know, their Metaverse is going to be uh, this gamified experience. And I think Metascapes looks absolutely phenomenal. We have Ultra. Uh, Ultra is doing a unique mint, I think, today. Um, so if you haven't gotten on Ultra, there's a link down below in the description. Sign up. Go over to their unique marketplace, and they're partnering up with Meta Brews Society. Um, they're excited to bring Ultra-themed uh, Ultra gaming brews and integrate Ultra's tech into the Meta Brew store. So uh, this one's interesting. And the killer app I see coming out of Ultra is Project Citadel, their first-person shooter. I think it looks absolutely flawless uh, at this point in time. Like the graphics, the gameplay, the scenery, everything looks great. And I think if that's a hit, then Ultra's really going to take off. So check them out down below in the description. And then um, Dreams Quest has been coming out with consistent updates today. Uh, I think, that, no, this was yesterday. They posted this. Uh, Origins Game Mechanics, their Wekipedia. So this is kind of like personalized to your inventory, personalized to your gameplay. It kind of shows you everything going on within your stack, your characters, your assets, your elixirs, all those good stuffs, all those good things. My bad there. Uh, 23 minutes into the recording, I fumble in a little grammar there. But uh, all that good stuff. So check them out as well down below in the description. It's one of those projects that has been building relentlessly since the last cycle. And I think uh, what they're doing will definitely surprise some people. So guys, like the video, subscribe. If you got value out of this, let me know down below in the comment section. And we will see you on the next one. As always, play well, my friends.